Hello everyone. Um, in this video I wanted to share some uh, free open source type programs that uh, you can use to do um, a few different things. Uh, some of them are from Microsoft. If you have a Windows computer you can use it. And there are a lot of free programs uh, that are available to do a lot of bunch of stuff. So I'm going to share some of them and also give you some websites and I'm most probably have a file in the a link to it in the description section so you can look at the file so you don't have to copy down all the website. Um, now for people who are uh, buying a new computer and if you end up with uh, Windows 8, the new operating system, and uh, these computers don't have the same look and feel as in the previous one and if you get a Windows 8 computer which is does not have a touch screen on it a place where you can touch the monitor and make changes to it uh, you may not like Windows 8 much but if you wanted to set things back to the way things were it is possible to do that in Windows 8 you'll also find that I'm just going to scroll down here that the start button this is the, the round button that is in your computer is missing the round start button on the left hand corner. So this is a free website which is called classicshell.net uh, which can be used and you can download it. It's uh, free and you can donate money to them if you want and this will bring you your don the start button back and also you can set this up in such a way that Windows 8 will automatically go to desktop rather than getting those tiles. So if you haven't never seen it, if you check any of the Windows 8 videos you'll find that it has tiles so you can go straight to it and also the start button can come back using classic shell so if you get a new computer you can always do this uh, you don't have to worry about uh, learning the new Windows 8 thing so so that's the first thing the second thing I want to talk about what Windows has what's called Windows Essentials and uh, quite a few interesting programs if you have it like Movie Maker and things like that and Photo Gallery and stuff so if you you have a Windows computer, you can download this for free. And I'll just show you. I have the Windows Movie Maker in my computer. And uh, so this is Windows Movie Maker that you can use to take all your pictures. And uh, you can make a DVD out of it. So if I want it, I can click on Add Videos and Photos. Uh, go to my Pictures folder. And I'll just add a bunch of these to the screen here. And now these pictures are added. Now, if I wanted, I could add music to it. I can add transitions and different movie themes and things like that. And you see on the left hand side, it's showing me uh, how it will look as it is going from one to the other. So, uh, some nice little features in here that you can use. You can also add title screen, like if you wanted to add a title in front of it with the uh, name of the movie and things, captions, and you wanted to add credits for directors and all of that stuff, so you can add it. And at the end, when you are done, you can either directly just move it to YouTube, or you could just click here, save movie, and you can choose a format. So you can choose to um, make it small so that you can email it to somebody. You can make it for a computer. Uh, so every they will tell you what the file size would be for each thing and they have some for some Windows phones and things like that. So so you can try to make a DVD and then burn it to it if you wanted to. So this is a nice little option uh, that you can try. Windows Live Movie Maker. And they got some other options you can look into it too. You can move the pictures, rotate them and things. Uh, just I think in here like it will rotate everybody rather than just one picture in this case. But I'm just going to close this. The the next thing to tell you about is what's called GIMP, G-I-M-P. Uh, if you heard about Adobe Photoshop, uh, GIMP can be like it, like it's not exactly the same, but it is very powerful um, to edit your pictures and make changes, and it's, it's, there's a whole lot of features in it. So if you needed something, you don't want to spend too much money on it, get this GIMP. Uh, it's a free program with a lot of features in it. Um, the next I want to tell you about what is called OpenOffice.org. So this is equivalent of Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Access, which is the database. Um, now, 
for work environments you do want to know Microsoft Office because many um, almost all companies would be using a version of Microsoft Office but at home if you didn't need to spend all that money and I personally prefer not to get the illegal copies and if you didn't have too much to do then open office will do the job and it's as powerful as Microsoft Office the only note I'll make is that if you are uh, making resumes and things like that do email it to a friend who has Microsoft Office to make sure that when they open it in Microsoft Office there are no problems so open office is a good thing for all kind of stuff along with open office there is another one called LibreOffice and uh, I think they initially they were together and then open office I believe is now owned by Oracle it is still open source however they've split up so I think LibreOffice uh, I think is where all the efforts are being done and I think you might find this much better uh, and adding more features so uh, check it out <coughs> if you needed something to do the next one is called Audacity uh, Audacity is a open source recording and editing program for sounds. Um, if you ever thought about, um, you know, you wanted to make an MP3 ringtone for your cell phone, you know, people have those uh, crazy ringtones on their cell phones. Audacity can be used to do that. So um, it's a nice little program. I'll just show you quickly. I've got Audacity installed on my computer, and you just go to File open let's see if I have any recent files no I hope I can find something um, quickly music uh, sample okay so you just open up any of the songs that you have uh, mp3 files now you can cut it you can uh, speed things up you can slow down the sound and things like that and then you just save it and then you can add it to your phone if you needed it as a ringtone so so this is the way it works and then you can cut whatever section you wanted so I could just highlight whatever I want hit delete and you see so I've deleted a whole bunch of middle section and now here's the song which has been reduced to 2 minutes 15 seconds and if I wanted I could make it even shorter now if you wanted to keep repeating things, you could just highlight this and edit and copy and just click at the end. I just need to get it lined up nicely. And then just edit and paste. So I've just doubled up the same thing like putting it on a loop and then I just have to save this as a new file name so I believe under file I haven't done this in a while there's an export option and you just export it as a mp3 file to wherever you want and you can put this transfer this to your cell phone and you'll have your ringtone so it's a pretty cool feature uh, but as I said there's a whole lot of good stuff in here and it's all free uh, and it's very powerful you can speed up the songs and all of that stuff so please look into it if you are interested in it and it's free um, and you can download it from their website and um, you'll find there are different versions for it so audacity the next one I want to introduce to you is called handbrake this is used to do encoding and things like that for videos like I'll, I'll give you an example I had a, a client who was doing lots of different talks and these talks were like 30 hours of video and uh, all the videos were being sold on DVDs and it was costing a lot of money to produce it, ship it. So we used Handbrake and we reduced it, uh, the file size and everything, into a different format uh, so that it will fit on a small USB stick. So we were able to take it from like say 20 gig to like 4 gig uh, in file size. So this again is uh, free and uh, you can look into it. Uh, you may need to learn a little bit it if you wanted to to understand the different things however you can down, go to the download page and download it and it's pretty cool I've used it I was very impressed how much it compressed things and uh, it helps to save space on your computer too so handbrake and as I said you'll see a link in the description so you don't need to start writing it down you could always just download that file which is in the link section uh, the next one is called Calibre 
this is to use for ebooks. So if you wanted a open source software to manage your ebooks or just for reading ebooks on your computer, you can do this. Um, you can also use this in many times to convert to different formats because in uh, ebooks there are different formats. So you can use Calibre once you download to your computer and um, you can convert to different formats. So sometimes certain books you can convert to an open source format and you can might be able to share it with somebody. And so you just go to the download and then you just go to whichever you want for Windows and there it is. So this is called Calibre. The next one is called VLC. This is a really good open source uh, video audio program. So if you ever wanted something that would play all type of files, there's a good chance VLC will play all of them. So you can download VLC on your computer to watch videos and DVDs and things like that. Uh, the next one is called Slim Cleaner. I've I've had a really good success with this program to uh, clean things up in my in a computer. Usually old computers when things start to get um, build up. So I use Slim Cleaner. There are a lot of different types out there, uh, registry cleaners and things like that. I find Slim Cleaner to be uh, pretty good. Um, it's um, it's done the job that I wanted it to do. Uh, and other people have had success with other things. So you can just download this, um, run it on your computer and let it do its thing and you might find that it cleans things up pretty well. Uh, the only thing to watch a lot of these software is that sometimes when you're installing, please read uh, what it is doing because sometimes they'll try to install some other programs because these are free. They try to make money so they might install like a um, some kind of an antivirus or or some some of the program along with it or it will install like a toolbar to your browser so but if you watch for it you'll see there are check marks where you can remove them or try to do a custom installation so then you'll be able to hit next 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 and you'll be able to choose uh, what it is that that you want to install and not all the crap that they might install on your computer so that is uh, Slim Cleaner. The next one is called Tor, T-O-R, torproject.org. Now this is a, a browser which protects your identity and it uh, hides your location too. So there's a lot of stuff that this program does. It makes you anonymous on the internet so you cannot be tracked. So if you look on the side, it talks about who uses it. So, you know, families who do want to protect themselves, businesses, activists, you know, like in different countries where they may have a little bit limited freedoms, they want to hide themselves uh, from people and so they are using it. This was actually created by the military and now it's kind of being allowed to be used by other people too. So if you want, uh, you can download this and use it for various reasons if you needed it. The next one is called Portable Apps. This is a pretty interesting program because there is a whole bunch of programs you can carry if you want it on a USB stick. So you see you can install this program and you can install it on your computer, on an SD drive or even on things like Dropbox. Like if you had an account with Dropbox which you can get for 2 gig for free. So you can have all this programs and you could be running it from the cloud with all your settings so if you are say going to a library uh, you can install this USB stick which has all your programs on your browser so all your settings are on it and you can uh, you can have your LibreOffice on it to open files and things like that so any computer you go to you will never be limited so I'll just give you an idea when I come to this get apps link here and so they have apps for accessibility uh, for programmers and things like that, for education base, games, bunch of games. So you can download this and then start installing whichever app you want. Like you get to choose what apps you want. So there's a whole bunch of apps that you can carry in your pocket on a USB stick. So you never have a problem when you go to a friend's computer or anything like that or to a library. So pretty good. PortableApps.com the next one is called nearsoft.net. Again, this is like a bunch of a uh, lot of different programs, password recovery tools, network tools, and things like that. So there are a lot of uh, technical stuff, uh, but you'll also find that they have other 
uh, utilities and tools uh, that you can use to do different things. Um, they tend to be a little bit more technical things. So, so Nersoft, uh, I'm just going to bring up my Google Chrome here just to show I had too many tabs to open there. Majorgeeks.com. Now, this is a place where they have lots and lots of free stuff and also some paid like you know there are some where you can use it for a short time and then you have to pay money or it is limited but if you look on the right left hand side you see they have all these different sections so you'll find that you're looking for a program they have most probably listed it here always be careful when you're going through these things that but uh, they try to do a good job of cleaning things up to make sure that they don't have any garbage programs here so there's a whole bunch of stuff in different categories that you can look at so this is called Make Geeks um, the other two small stuff that I just wanted to point out jzip.com this is like WinZip which is a program where you can use to take 10 12 files and turn it into one file so it's easy to email and also if you get a file which is called a zipped file you can unzip it so usually say if you had 20 pictures you could zip it into one picture so you just send it all together and this is a free one and uh, Winamp which is again is a nice little audio program media pl player program that you can look into if you needed it I think uh, that should do it. Uh, if you ha know of any interesting programs, please leave a note, a comment, so everybody can come to know about it, and maybe I'll update it to my file, and I'll try to do that from time to time as I come across some interesting uh, websites and programs. Thanks for watching.